Nintendo have a lot of unique and interesting IPs. I mean, just think, we've got the Mario series, Zelda, Metroid, etc. But there's one franchise in particular that Nintendo has, which doesn't get many regular installments, and for a lot of people can be somewhat a distant memory with very few reiterations of the series. A series about a bunch of bipedal animals in spacecraft that go across the galaxy fighting evil, and that series is known as Star Fox, and in this video in particular, I'm going to be talking about the game Star Wing, which released on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, but in the US it was known just as Star Fox. Star Wing was the first game in the Star Fox series. It employed powerful 3D effects for the time, and helped pave the way for future pilot and flight sim games. Looking at what the SNES was capable of, it's quite impressive how much scale is possible from this game. So to get to grips with the controls, let's check out the tutorial. We even get to try out all the buttons in a sort of pre-game lobby before we have the training wheels taken off. Why is this no longer in games? It really works well. We get to fly around a bit and try out the main guns, bombs, booster jet, brakes, barrel rolls, and even do some formation work with our squad. But as we delve into the main story, we essentially are beset with a conflict in the Lilac system between two forces. Scientist Andros has been exiled to the planet Venom, where he's amassed a gigantic fleet to destroy Corneria, homeland of General Pepper, and the Star Fox team. Pepper sends Fox McCloud to take out Andros on planet Venom. Andros also managed to kill Fox's father, who was also an ace pilot, and so Fox embarks on his mission with his team to get revenge, or... justice? Or... whatever. To get to Venom, however, there are three paths, an easy, normal, and hard route. Each has unique worlds and environments to explore, and even unique boss fights depending on which you pick. All three start on Corneria, but have varying difficulties in enemy pathways. Every time we complete a level, we go to a very charming level select map, where we see how far we travel across the system. In this instance, we get Sector X, Sector Y, and Titania. Wow, look, this is a really cool looking red planet. I mean, I'm guessing there's going to be volcanoes, lava maybe, something on fire at least. Good luck! Hang on. This is the planet that we saw on the map, the big red one that looked like it was engulfed in fire. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the other by the time I finish this song? I started my journey on Route 1, which is the equivalent of normal mode, and found myself struggling to get back into the groove of the fast-paced combat. However, after a few incursions, I started to get the hang of it. Or might I say that this music is fantastic. Yeah, it's simple, but bloody hell, it sticks in your mind. Even the menu music has a sort of military vibe and then goes into a strange, spacey, almost spooky sounding quality. But as we make our way through each mission, we also have to keep an eye on our squad mates. Peppy the Hare, Slippy the Frog, and Falco the Falcon, can all come under fire from enemy units and take damage. If we rescue them by taking out the threat, they'll lend a hand taking care of some of the enemies by our side, even if they incessantly moan about us nearly hitting them with our gunfire. However, for the most part, everyone's happy when you help them from a nasty dogfight. Except for Falco. Oh! Throw my six! For God's sake, I've got him. It's fine. You can't do anything right. Shadow Giraffe, could you please stop getting out of formation? It's really annoying and we can't get anything done properly. I didn't even need your help. I was fine. My code name's stupid anyway. This is like the seventh time today. He's gone too far ahead. I can't deal with this. Like, how many times am I supposed to save his ass? Look, if you're going to be a problem, it's a good thing I have this self-destruct button and then at least we can get rid of you for once. Did you just put a self-destruct button in a ship? Ah! Plus, every so often we can find power-ups which range from extra bombs, wing repairs, bonus shielding, blaster upgrades, and even extra lives. 
And considering the scope of the game, there are a lot of cool environments. Asteroid belts, icy planets, ship armadas, and Venom itself is a very dreary looking place. Even though this game is on rails, it captures being able to pilot a spacefaring fighter craft really well. Especially when you're going through areas like this. Or even like this freaky looking asteroid field. Oh my god. What is that? I think I found out where the moon from Majora's Mask came from. And might I say the boss fights in this game are crazy. Most of them are extremely harsh but definitely unique, especially given the limited amount of detail and processing given to the system. I mean, we got 16 here to deal with, ranging from tank-like behemoths, bay blades, lots of core bosses, and like a bird thing with a giant neck and two heads. And it's a massive pain to kill. Plus there's even a couple of bonus levels if you do certain requirements in the asteroid levels. For example, in the easy route, if you blow up all three spinning asteroid links at point blank range, you'll see a smiling face asteroid which you need to shoot to open a portal to a black hole. When you finish the level, you even exit on the normal route on Route 2. Plus, if you play the third route and destroy an asteroid on the right side, you'll make it lay an egg. And it'll turn into a bird? And when you shoot it in the eyes, it'll swallow you and, uh... lead you to a slot machine boss? Where you have to keep shooting the one-armed bandit until it shows 777? And when you quote-unquote win, you get locked into an unending minigame where you spell the end. Forever. But at the end of the final part of the first two routes, we get to fight Andros, who's a big face dude. And he's a monkey who lives inside a cube of his own face? <laughs> what? However, if you tackle the much more difficult third route and manage to make it past the ridiculously nasty boss fights, unfairly placed obstacles and those bloody spirally fireball things, you'll make it to Andros in his mega powerful form where after you take him out for the first time, he becomes like a demon skull faced fireball eyed dick. And he even goads you before the battle about how he killed your dad on this very same route. But if you do manage to beat him, you're treated to a cutscene of Fox and his squad regrouping and heading back to Corneria, satisfied with their assassination of a monkey scientist who lived in a cube inside a demon robot face thing on a planet named after a deadly toxin. Video games. So there we have Star Wing, a game I played a lot of when I was a kid but actually never finished until I was doing the footage for this video. Now obviously this game looks like crap compared to anything that followed but it's a very important game not only in terms of gameplay, setting a new standard for a brand new IP but also the technology that was involved. And considering the vast love that the Nintendo fans and people like me have for this series, I still don't understand why Nintendo don't just make a new Star Fox game about going through the Lilac system and spacefaring and having all that stuff done rather than, you know, that game about dinosaurs and that game where you played the game like this. And even though Lilac Wars or Star Fox 64 for you guys in America became a more successful triumphant sequel, I still think a lot of people need to remember this game because of what it started off, the getting the ball rolling kind of thing. I still go back to this game occasionally because it's still quite a lot of fun even though it's very basic and it's actually got a lot of technical stuff going on considering the hardware it's on. But either way, that was my video on Star Wing for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys later. Good luck!